computer art video and what we're going to do today is change up the name on some kind of food packaging so we're creating fake food um, so there's two ways to do this we're going to go first into how to do it on a packaging that has kind of a label um, outline shape um, kind of like the uh, Snickers bar or the Whiskers bar and then uh, also kind of like this Kravity's bar with the uh, rotten tooth over here. Um, and then we'll go into a second way actually to do something more like this packaging where you've got just the letters rearranged and then kind of the texture behind the um, letters has been cleaned up using a content fill awareness. So first ones we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a Snickers bar. So I'm just gonna close these out. I'm gonna go ahead over to Google Chrome and I've already done a search for a Snickers bar label. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that and copy that image, scoop back to Photoshop and go file new. Um, so next what we will want to do is just go ahead and click create because Photoshop's already recognized the size of the image we've copied and then we can go edit paste or hit command V to paste this and work with it. So what we're gonna do here, because there's a label here that we can use, um, we're gonna use our lasso tool. First, we're gonna zoom in really close. And I like to take the polygonal lasso, a little easier to control at times. So I'm just gonna click right around this lettering, staying in between the lines, of course and trying to stay in the white area here. Now I can skip a bunch. I'm just gonna move my mouse over here and the screen will scroll. Again, clicking, clicking, clicking around the corner, around the bend, and then across the top here. Again, just putting my mouse off the side and the screen will scroll for me and then I can close that line up. So now I'll zoom out just a tad. Um, what I'm gonna do now is create a new layer over the top of the candy bar. And here I am going to take my eyedropper tool and I'm going to select this color, this white. It's not perfect white, so I'm gonna sample it or select it um, here to get that slight off white that's going on. Um, now I'll go ahead and hold down on my, what I had is my pencil tool, maybe your brush tool. We want the brush tool, so we'll go ahead and take that. Um, you can set this to a really large size, you could set it to really small, but um, let's see here, that's a funny brush I got going. So I'll change this up and see if, there we go, that works. So really all I want to do is fill in this space. Um, I'm not actually erasing the text at all. Um, you don't, I don't think you want to erase it really. Um, we're just working on a new layer right over the top. So if I were to click the visibility on this layer, I'd still see the Snickers bar underneath it. Um, that may be helpful later on too for if we get into uh, blending, um, kind of try and create a little sense of shadows uh, on the edges of the wrapper to make it possibly a little more realistic. But now you can see basically the gist of it here is I've got kind of a clean slate that I can go ahead and have some fun with. So next thing you're going to want to do is uh, do a search for the font of whatever candy bar you've chosen or whatever food packaging you've chosen. Um, you can try and just go ahead with the Google search and say whatever food you've chosen and font and see if you find something. There's chances you might not find the exact thing, but maybe something really close to it or something that may even be just cool or funny to put in its place of the normal font. So I actually was able to kind of locate the Snickers font and download it from thefont.com um, and then go back. I'm going to go back to Photoshop. I've added it to my font book already. Um, in one of our previous lessons, we've already gone into how to add a text to your font book. So I will not go through that here. Um, I believe this font was called Snickers and there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Um, as soon as you click and drag to make a, a text box, uh, Photoshop will create a new layer here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and type in whatever I would want to make this Snickers bar called now. Um, the other one was Whiskers. We could go with S K I P P E R S. So, Skippers. Um, so that text was in white still, so obviously you're not going to see it, so I'm going to go ahead and 
change it to black so that um, I can actually see what I'm working with here. Now the other thing and the reason why we didn't want to uh, take away this font here or erase it is so now I can still match the color of and the style of the text to this text that I have here. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight it, uh, take my eyedropper tool and click on this blue color. Oops, actually, so what I'm going to want to do is eyedrop blue and then um, I'll just choose that same color. Um, you can actually copy its number, its digital number here from the color picker. So I can hit Command C and copy that. that and then uh, go ahead back to my font here, select it, and then um, go back and paste it or Actually, I could just say okay then at that point. So um, there we go. So now I have a blue that's very similar. Now the only other thing you probably want to do um, is add some kind of like a bevel edge. So you can see there's this little like double edge on the uh, lettering here. So I probably want to add an effect like that. So what I would do to get that effect is go to the FX panel here. And um, beveling is what gives you kind of a little 3D edge. Um, Outer glow may be something you want to add as well. Outer glows to shapes or drop shadows. Drop shadows is the other thing you're going to find on uh, labels a lot. But this looks a little more like a beveling. So I'm going to go to bevel here. That opens up this new layer. And you can kind of see the little like three-dimensional kind of thing it does to the letters there. We've got different styles of bevels here. Um, and then you got to change their amounts here to really see the results sometimes. So turn up the size. Um, soften. I don't see much going on there. So embossing. Um, this one got a little funny. But again, if I turn that level back down, um, you can see that gives me that little bit of 3D edge that I'm kind of going for here. Um, yeah, I'll keep the depth pretty high. Um, and embossing looks like kind of like the effect I think that I wanted to go for there. So um, now basically kind of the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this uh, layer back on, my white layer, and I'll just go ahead and take my font, move it into the place here to take place. And, um, you know, now maybe what I'll do as well is I could enlarge in the font or I could just kind of extend it, transform it, holding shift and then dragging on the corners of this uh, text box in order to get it bigger to fill the space. So that looks like it's going to fill it pretty good. And I'll go ahead and move this into place, maybe even just nudging, just pushing the arrow keys on my keyboard to get it into place. And um, that pretty much does it. So the other thing I could do is, you know, add other little pictures or things that I clip out to the sides. But that's pretty much it for approach one. Um, now, really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and save. Um, I'll call it Skippers and uh, Photoshop document. So we'll go ahead and uh, go over to creating one in another approach really quick. Just going to go over how we might take letters off of packaging, rearrange it, and then add a content aware fill in the background. So what we're going to do is start with the same kind of bear snacks um, label here. And I'll go ahead and again copy this image. Um, go ahead and start a new document. So I will go ahead and say create again and then hit command V to paste this in. So what we're going to do in order to uh, use this text again is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lasso right around it. Um, I'm actually going to use my regular lasso tool this time and click and hold and go around the letters kind of closely. Um, and then, actually, maybe I don't really want that copyright mark. I'm going to go around that. And then, once I get all the way around, I'm actually just going to Command-C, Command-V to copy and paste that onto a new layer. So you can see now it's kind of pasted on its own here above it. Um, I'm actually going to want to get that same selection back again, though. So here, I'm going to turn this layer off for right now. And what I'm going to do is go right around, actually, um, maybe I will still keep that on there. It may actually make it go away when I do this fill content aware. Um, so I'm going to go right around that text again. And now what I want to do is with my selection arrow, I'm going to right click. Oops. Oh, actually, maybe I am on, I'm supposed to be on my fill tool. 
Oh no, I don't have the right layer selected. That's what was happening. So if I right click on this layer, actually with my arrow tool, I believe. I'm not sure actually, I feel like I am not getting the message I wanted. Oh, there we go. So with your selection tool selected, sorry. Um, we want to fill. We want to fill this with a contents of contents aware. So it's gonna fill this in based on what's going on around the edges. So when I say okay, you can see it kind of blends right over. It kind of copies that texture and repeats it over out and kind of knocks out that entire um, word that I have there. Um, so now what I have is this text um, on its own layer and now I can try and get really close in here and copy uh, crop these letters out from the texture that's in the background. So what I'll probably use is my quick selection brush and zoom in a little bit here. Um, gonna go ahead back to my quick selection brush. I wanna make the size a bit smaller. It's um, one of those things with the quick select brush, you kinda want it to be the size that fits into the areas where you're going to select. This looks pretty good. I could go even maybe just a smidge smaller, like seven. Um, so as I select, it's kind of expanding. Um, oops, I'm on the wrong layer again. Got to keep track of your layers. So you could just click once at a time, sometimes the quick select brush, and have much better results. So that actually worked pretty good. Um, clicked on the center area, worked pretty good. So just going around, clicking once at a time, um, sometimes is the most effective way for the uh, quick select brush. So again, not forgetting the uh, inside of the letters there. Um, and now I'm just going to go ahead and delete all that other stuff. Um, and then I can hit Command D. Um, you do see I do still have this funny little weird outline here. Going to go ahead and take my eraser and erase this business. All right. So then uh, once I get through with this, I'll have all the letters that I need and I can use to rearrange into any other word that I want to using these letters. So I could spell um, bear with B-E-A-R just by simply taking these letters, selecting with my lasso tool and moving them, copying and pasting them on their own layer and moving them around. Um, so if I wanted to, let's say, what should I spell? We could go um, maybe take this R and I could copy it and then hit Command V to paste it and I could then take the R, maybe put the R as the first letter. Um, maybe then I could take the lasso again, um, go around the A and copy and paste again. Oops. So actually, I think I needed to go back to this layer two, copy and paste. So now I have an extra A. And um, let's see, maybe what I'll do is say A bear. And what I'll do is then take the uh, E again, copy, oh, layer is empty, copy and paste. Not keeping track of my layer as well. This ends up being a long tutorial though because I'm doing two techniques in one. Um, but I'll go ahead and post in the comments um, what point I do the second one so that people can just go one to the next. All right, anyways, I'm gonna take these. I'm again going to actually go uh, Command X. Again, need to just make sure I go back to that layer. Command X to cut it. Um, and then Command V is going to paste those on their own layer. So now I can take this, go here, I can take this, go here, and then this E actually ends up being an extra. Um, but you can see how I can, you know, copy paste these letters and spell anything else that I want to. Um, this E is actually part of that original text layer. And so I'm actually just going to hit delete and then Command D to uh, deselect. So now I think I have all the layers, or uh, letters, layers and letters that I need and want to use to accomplish this. I'm gonna hit enter to keep that transformation. Turn this back on and um, now you can see I can just kind of rearrange these. 
um, make them fit and maybe shrink them down because now we have more letters than really uh, worse previously on here to make space. Oops, I didn't have this guy selected. Let's see, do I have him now? Nope. All right, so let's hit enter. I need to make sure I get that one in there too. I could do it from my layers panel actually. That is not a bad idea. So here we go. Nope, come on. Anyways, I'll go for it in my layers panel. So if I start at the top layer and then I go down to the uh, last text layer that I have here and holding shift click, that means I got all of them. Sweet. So I'm going to shrink this so that I can fit them in and still kind of keep it next to that copyright mark. <laughs> copyright A bear. And then this one I kind of want a little space because it's going to be like a bear. And then, uh, yeah, all I would want to do is put a uh, some other kind of image here. It is a honey uh, pair of chips, so maybe I'll put uh, my boy Winnie. Winnie the Pooh uh, make an appearance, a cameo appearance on this fine. Oh, I actually found this looks like a either a PNG file or something that he's not gonna have a background so that's always nice to um, not have to use any tools to clip out the background so there we go um, we got kind of a funny fake food we got a couple of them um, we've got a bear honey coconut chips and skippers so there you go two different techniques to create fake foods in Photoshop hope you guys have fun and get creative with your own projects